Did you know that around 537 million adults around the world are living with diabetes and that this number is projected to rise to 643 million by 2030? Even though the numbers are massive, there's still a lack of understanding of what diabetes is, what types it has, and what to do if you're diagnosed with it. So before we start, my name is Amy and I'm here to be your special guide in answering all the questions about diabetes. I promise I will make it as simple as possible, so let's go ahead and get started. So diabetes is a condition when your blood glucose level, also known as blood sugar level, is too high. Let me put it simply, blood glucose is your main source of energy and it comes from the food that you eat. Now, insulin, a hormone made by the pancreas, helps glucose from food get into your cells to be used for energy. When you have diabetes, your body doesn't produce enough insulin or it doesn't use it effectively. So glucose then stays in your blood and it doesn't reach your cells. And over time, having too much glucose in your blood can cause health problems. Now there are two main types of diabetes, type one and type two. There are also some rarer types as well, but today I'm only gonna talk about these two conditions since they are the most common. Now let's go through both types step by step. Type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is usually diagnosed in children and teens, but it can develop at any age. It's thought to be an autoimmune reaction when your body mistakenly attacks the cells that produce insulin. So in this case, your body produces very little or no insulin. So you need daily insulin injections to maintain blood glucose levels and to get them under control. Now, the exact cause of type 1 diabetes is actually still unknown. There may be both genetic and environmental factors, but your lifestyle choices don't play a role here. Type 1 diabetes symptoms can develop in just a few weeks or months. Okay, now here you can see the list of type 1 diabetes signs and symptoms. So if you or your loved one have some of these symptoms, it is best to consult your doctor and get tested, just in case. Type 2 diabetes. Now, that's the most common type of diabetes. About 90 to 95% of people with diabetes have type 2, and it's usually diagnosed in adults. If you have type 2 diabetes, your body doesn't produce enough insulin or it can't use it efficiently. Now, there are several risk factors that may increase the risk, like being overweight or obese, physical inactivity, family history of diabetes, race and ethnicity, age, and history of gestational diabetes. And before people develop type 2 diabetes, they almost always have pre-diabetes. Now, this is when your blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but they're not yet high enough to be diagnosed as diabetes. Now, pay attention to this list. These are the common symptoms of type 2 diabetes. What you need to know is that they often develop slowly. In fact, you can be living with type 2 for years and not even know it. So if you have any of the symptoms of diabetes or pre-diabetes, please be sure and get tested as soon as you can. Okay, by the way, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the Clino channel. More great videos about diabetes management are yet to come. Did you do it? <laughs> All right, so now that you know the main facts about diabetes, we come to the most important question, what to do if you're diagnosed. I know that the diagnosis can be shocking and overwhelming, so the first thing you need to do is just sit down and relax. You need to remember that both types of diabetes are very manageable with the right kind of treatment plan. If you have a good healthcare team, then there is very little reason why you can't live a normal life. But it does go without saying that diabetes will require your attention every day. No matter which type you have, you have to follow these steps. Step one, control your blood sugar levels. Your doctor will let you know what your target blood sugar range should be, as well as how and when to check it. And this way you'll know how food and exercise and medicine affect your glucose level. All right, step two, maintain a healthy diet. You'll need to keep a well-balanced, nutritious, and healthy diet especially if you're overweight and have type 2 diabetes. Step three, keep a regular exercise routine. Alongside a healthy diet, any good healthcare team is also going to suggest regular physical activity to help manage diabetes. And lastly, step four, take insulin or medications as prescribed by your doctor. Type 1 diabetes requires external insulin. You can take this in the form of injections at regular intervals or get an insulin pump attached to your body, which will release the insulin. 
for type 2 diabetes treatment. Your doctor may prescribe one or more medications to get the sugar levels under control. Now, even if you neglect one aspect, you may face minor or major diabetes complications. Getting all this information in one go can be so overwhelming at the start of a diabetes diagnosis, but I promise you that once you have a diabetes treatment plan in place, you will have the support you need in order to succeed and to keep your blood sugar at the desired levels. Have you been recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and your doctor prescribed you some sort of medication you know nothing about? You may seem confused and lost, even though you know that you're in good hands of your healthcare team. Well, no need to worry because today I'll guide you through the main diabetes medications, how they work, and their possible side effects. And by the way, <laughs> my name is Amy and I'll be your personal helper in guiding you through your diabetes journey. More videos are yet to come, so hit that subscribe button on the Clean Note channel. I don't want you to miss a thing. Okay, let's get back to diabetes medication now. Since you've been recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, you may have to take oral tablets called metformin. It's usually the first diabetes medication your doctor will prescribe if a healthy diet and physical activity are not enough to manage your blood sugar levels. Metformin reduces the amount of glucose the liver releases into the body. Now the tablets should be taken with food to avoid any side effects like heartburn or nausea. However, if lifestyle changes together with metformin are not controlling the blood sugar well enough, your doctor might prescribe additional medicines. Okay, what are the other options? Well, people with diabetes might need to take a glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist, for short, GLP-1 agonist. Okay, but what is that glucagon-like peptide 1? Well, it's a hormone that gets released into our bodies whenever we eat. So this medication mimics the action of the hormones and stimulates the body to secrete more insulin. Now this extra insulin is going to help lower blood sugar levels. GLP-1 agonist is usually an injectable medication, but there are also tablets. However, some diabetes patients can have some side effects from GLP-1 agonists, such as nausea or diarrhea. These effects are usually mild and do not result in cutting off the drug. Okay, I know that some people are worried about the GLP-1 agonists leading to hypoglycemia, the condition when your blood sugar levels are too low. But this risk is increased only when this medication is combined with another one called sulfonylureus. However, this medication is no longer commonly prescribed. Many people with type 2 diabetes ask if they will need to take insulin. And as you may know, people with type 1 diabetes will always require insulin injections because their body produces little or no insulin. But someone with type 2 diabetes may need insulin injections as part of their treatment plan as well. You might need insulin further down the line if your body is not producing enough insulin for your specific needs. Okay, so some types of insulin work very quickly and are taken with meals while others are long acting and are used just once or twice a day. But if you've just been diagnosed, then this is not your case at this moment, so please, you do not need to worry. Another additional medication in diabetes management is sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor, also known as SGLT2 inhibitor. Now, this is a new line of additional treatment that prevents glucose from being reabsorbed into your kidney and removes the extra glucose through the urine. It shows fewer side effects than other medications with just a small number of patients complaining about yeast infections. Now, you need to keep in mind that extra medications and diabetes management is not the same for all people. It all depends on your diabetes and how it progresses and specific health factors. So each patient is unique. The good news is that there are more options than ever before to help you manage your diabetes. Hey there everyone, my name is Amy and I'm here to be your guide in answering all the questions that you may have about diabetes. And today, let's talk about conditions usually associated with type 2 diabetes. Alright, let's get started. If you are one of those people with type 2 diabetes, your main purpose is to reduce all potential health complications. Now, these include diabetic neuropathy, kidney disease, heart failure, and various vascular disorders. So let's go through each condition step by step and see what you can do to avoid it. Okay, so let's start with diabetic neuropathy. This is nerve damage that can occur over time due to high blood sugar levels. Diabetic neuropathy most often damages nerves in the legs and feet. 
Its main symptoms are pain and numbness in the legs, feet, and hands. It can also cause a tingling sensation, burning, or shooting pains that usually begin at the fingers or toes and spread up the body. Now, diabetic neuropathy is a serious diabetes complication that can affect 50% of people with diabetes. However, it is highly preventable and can be slowed with consistent blood sugar management and a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so type 2 diabetes can also increase the risk of diabetic kidney disease. Our kidneys filter about a half a cup of blood every single minute, removing all the waste and extra fluids in our bodies. But over time, poorly controlled diabetes might lead to diabetic kidney disease. Signs like worsening blood pressure control and swelling of your ankles and feet are the red flags that do need medical attention. Diabetes can also affect the filtration ability of the kidney, so maintaining a healthy lifestyle and adequately managing your blood pressure is essential to keep diabetic kidney disease at bay. Okay, so blood pressure control is also critically important in avoiding coronary artery disease, which affects the blood flow to the heart. This specific disease is caused by the buildup of plaque in the walls of the coronary arteries, which are the blood vessels that supply oxygen and blood to the heart. Now this plaque is made up of cholesterol deposits, making the inside of the artery smaller and decreasing blood flow. This process is called atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. Unfortunately, it can lead to heart attack if there is a decreased blood flow to the heart or cause a stroke if there is diminished blood flow to the brain. But this hardening of the arteries can also happen in other parts of the body as well, such as the legs and feet. This condition is called peripheral artery disease or PAD. This is usually the first sign that a person with diabetes has cardiovascular disease. Okay, I know it all sounds really overwhelming, but no need to panic here. Remember that a healthy lifestyle is the single most important factor in reducing all the conditions related to type 2 diabetes. Eating healthy and learning how to choose balanced meals are essential if you want to avoid many of these conditions. For example, choose foods with a low glycemic index like whole grain bread, whole wheat pasta, and brown or wild rice. They're high in fiber, which helps keep your digestive system in good shape. Also, whole fruits are a good choice as they have natural sugars, vitamins, and minerals. They can be your best option for a healthy snack in between your main meals. Hey, cook with healthier fats like olive oil or rapeseed oil and garnish your meals with unsalted nuts, seeds, and avocados. And don't forget to keep moving. Being physically active goes hand in hand with healthy foods since it helps you manage your diabetes by reducing the risk of heart problems. By exercising, you increase the amount of glucose used by your muscles, which helps the body use insulin more efficiently. So always keep in mind, a healthy diet, physical activity, and regular sleep schedule are crucial in managing your diabetes. Hey everyone, this is Amy again, and today I'm gonna to answer the most frequently asked questions. What are the physical signs that your blood sugar is too high? And what should you do when you notice them? Let's get started. All right, so before stepping into these questions, I wanna clear out some common things about high blood sugar. Now, firstly, high blood sugar is a condition that's also known as hyperglycemia. Now, secondly, this condition usually affects people with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And thirdly, uncontrolled high blood sugar levels can lead to various problems, such as permanent damage to nerves in your hands, your feet, and eyes, and even increase the risk of kidney disease, heart attack, and stroke. Now, I know that all of that sounds worrying, so let's see what physical symptoms you can notice when you have high blood sugar levels, all right? So number one, is more frequent peeing. When there's too much sugar in your blood, your kidneys have to work extra hard to get rid of it. And as a result, you start going to the bathroom more often than you normally would. Now naturally, such frequent urination is going to lead to the number two symptom, which is being more thirsty than usual. When you flush out that extra blood sugar, your body needs more water to make energy and to transfer nutrients and to get rid of waste. That's why all of a sudden you feel really, like really thirsty. <laughs> all right, so the third symptom is that you feel tired and fatigued. The right amount of blood sugar gives energy to your body's cells and organs. When you have high blood sugar, the opposite happens. Your body's cells can't access the blood sugar for energy, so as a result, you find it hard to concentrate and you just feel really tired. Now also this symptom can go hand in hand with the next sign, which is headaches. 
Headaches are actually an early sign of hyperglycemia. If your diabetes is uncontrolled and the fluctuations in your blood glucose levels are high, you're more likely to have headaches and more often. All right, so what's next? Well, hitting that subscribe button on the Clinio channel, of course. You know that here we talk about diabetes management and we answer all the questions that may just pop into your head about diabetes, right? Okay, so let's move forward. The number five symptom of high blood sugar is blurry vision. You may notice that your vision isn't as clear as it used to be and that things may appear like a bit blurry. High blood sugar causes the lens of the eye to swell, which will change your ability to see. But there is no need to panic here. Your vision will go back to normal after your blood sugar stabilizes. The number six symptom is unexplained weight loss. Now this means you're dropping weight without dieting or exercising. When you have high blood sugar levels, your body doesn't get energy from the glucose, right? Well, when this happens, your body starts burning fat and muscle for energy and you start losing weight. All right, so now you know the main symptoms of high blood sugar and it is necessary to treat it right away to prevent serious complications. Okay, so here are the main tips of what you should do to avoid high blood sugar levels or how to treat them without waiting any longer. First up is to check your blood sugar levels as your doctor advises. Take diabetes medications responsibly. Don't skip or change doses unless your doctor advises you differently. Drink more water. Water helps remove excess sugar from your blood through urine and it helps you avoid dehydration. Speak to your healthcare provider or dietitian about which foods to eat or avoid, how much to eat and how often. Now, of course, avoid eating too much sugary or starchy food. Try to manage stress. High stress levels can impact hormones and blood sugar levels. It's important for people with diabetes to find ways to manage their stress, such as prioritizing sleep and maybe trying relaxation techniques like meditation. All right, exercise regularly. Working out can help lower your blood sugar, but under certain conditions, it actually can make blood sugar go even higher. So ask your doctor what kind of exercises are right for you. Manage your weight. Your doctor may suggest losing weight if you're overweight. Now, if you work to keep your blood sugar under control, you follow your meal plan, your exercise program, and your medicine schedule, you should not have to worry about hyperglycemia. Which diet's popularity continues to grow among people with diabetes? And which one has been on the researcher's radar for years now? You guessed it, it's the keto diet. But what's all the fuss about? And is the keto diet really worth it? <laughs> Let's dig into that today and see what the keto diet actually is, how it can be beneficial for people with diabetes, and what potential dangers it may have for them. All right, so the American Diabetes Association has suggested various ways of effectively managing diabetes and controlling its symptoms. And the keto diet is one of such approaches. So what's the keto diet? Well, it's a low carb diet that helps people with diabetes gain the needed energy without depending on carbs. Now the keto diet is high in fat, which is an alternative energy source for the carbs that are almost non-existent in keto meals. Okay, so this diet is not just a fat-filled meal. Instead, it's usually a small meal that majorly comprises good fats, a small amount of protein, and almost non-existent carbs. Okay, but what kinds of benefits do people with diabetes get from such an eating approach? Well, first of all, keto became one of the most trusted diets for preventing diabetes and avoiding complications for those already diagnosed with the condition. Now, the goal of the keto meal plan is to improve blood glucose levels, which reduces the risk of diabetes. The keto diet helps control sugar spikes, glucose concentration, and diabetes complications. Diabetes stems from high blood sugar and doubles as one of the most severe cardiovascular risk factors. Now, the good thing is that choosing a low glycemic index diet like the keto diet can help you avoid diabetes and its associated conditions in its entirety. And unlike other low carb eating approaches that still incorporate a mix of carbs, the keto diet reduces them to the barest minimum. Now instead, you're eating healthy fats with a low glycemic index that won't cause any severe weight gain. Okay, so for example, some of the primary fats in a keto diet include fatty fish, cottage cheese, avocado, olive oil, nuts, and nutmeg butter or seeds. Now by the way, there have also been a number of studies on diabetes and the keto diet. 
They generally highlight positive results on how this eating approach benefits people with diabetes and those vulnerable to the condition. A 2008 study showed the keto diet helps with glycemic control and improves diabetes symptoms. The results were quite beneficial to the extent that the participants reduced their diabetes medications to prevent hypoglycemia. Also, there were improvements in weight loss, fasting glucose, and fasting insulin. Pretty impressive. However, even though all of these benefits sound really promising, there are also some potential dangers of the keto diet for diabetic people. So let's go through the major ones. Now, the very first danger is that the keto diet increases the risk of high ketone levels. Now, while a low carb diet is perfect for losing weight, the high fat content associated with the keto diet increases your risk of high ketone levels. High ketone levels predispose you to diabetes ketoacidosis, a more complicated form of diabetes. So if you plan to try out the keto diet to control diabetes, it's really important to monitor how its effects progress so that they don't become damaging. Now the second risk is paradoxal weight gain. In the beginning, you could get so excited about losing weight with keto, but it's not all roses. Most people on the keto diet don't maintain weight loss past the first few months. And after sticking to the diet for a while, many are very likely to lose their will and they return to their former diet. However, such relapse comes with a serious cost. Now, firstly, there is a high chance your body will start holding on to sugary contents because of the consistent sugar starvation during the keto diet. And secondly, there's an associated psychological effect that makes you want to eat sugary food more than usual because you feel the lack of it during your keto period. So you're risking gaining all the weight you lost before the keto diet or even more. Now the third danger is the so-called yo-yo phenomenon. One issue associated with the keto diet is the yo-yo phenomenon. It's characterized by a lack of consistency in dieting. You follow a diet, you give it up, you start again. The keto diet is one of the most common causes of this phenomenon as it's highly restricting. So a person with diabetes loses weight, gains it, and loses it again in a continuous circle. That leads to unhealthy spikes and dips in blood sugar, resulting in further complications. Now, I want to be honest here. Combining the keto diet and diabetes is realistically possible only for a short period. You don't have to stay on a poor diet, so I recommend getting proper guidance from the Clinio Diabetes Management Meal app. It'll help you gradually incorporate healthy meals into your diet, eliminating the risk of gaining back all the weight you lost and harming your health. I will put the link in the description below this video, so definitely check the Clinio app out. Did you know that stress and blood sugar levels are connected? I am not messing with you right now. It's actually the real deal. Yes, we all know that certain foods like carbs can send your blood glucose levels through the roof, right? But how can stress be connected with that? Well, I need you to watch further because not only am I going to explain how it works, I'm also going to give you five simple techniques to relax and to help keep your blood sugar levels at normal levels. Okay, so when you have type one or type two diabetes, stress has a huge role to play. When you experience physical or emotional stress, your body releases stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. Now in response, the body releases an extra energy into the bloodstream in the form of glucose. And now this is a perfectly natural body reaction. Now, for example, if you're being chased by a vicious animal or you're in some other dangerous situation, you need these hormones to prepare your body for a fight or flight mode. But when you're stressed, your body releases these hormones even if there isn't a major physical threat involved. And the result of it, well, higher blood pressure, increased heart rate, and a rise in blood sugar. Now, when you have diabetes, it can become a big problem because when the stress is constant, your hormones and blood sugar will continue to surge. Now, also keep in mind that your blood sugar levels due to stress depend on which type of diabetes that you have. So if you have type two, you generally experience an increase in blood glucose levels but if you have type one diabetes, you may have a more varied response. You can experience either an increase or a decrease in blood glucose levels. So what you have to do whenever you feel stressed is to monitor your blood sugar levels. This way you'll see if stress is actually affecting them or not. Now, what I strongly recommend you do is when you feel stressed to rate your level of mental stress on a scale of one to 10. 10 reflects the highest level of stress. Write this number down in your journal. 
Now, after rating your stress, check your glucose levels. Continue doing this for the next couple of weeks. After some time, you'll notice the pattern. If you see that your glucose is regularly high, it is likely that stress is negatively affecting your blood sugar. Now, I know that everyday life can be stressful, okay? Pressure at work, problems in the family or in relationships, trying to cope with everyday tasks and responsibilities. And guys, no need to say that controlling diabetes itself can be emotionally draining, especially in those early days when you've just been diagnosed. You have to pay close attention to what you eat and you need lots of new things to learn and to remember. It can be tough, okay? In fact, people with diabetes are 20% more likely to experience anxiety than those without the condition. Finding the right ways to deal with stress when you have diabetes is an absolute must. Okay, so that's why I put together five simple yet very effective techniques that will help you relax and keep normal blood sugar levels. Number one is exercising. Even brief periods of walking can help you relax and deal better with stress. Now, if you can exercise in a gym or join some kind of exercise class, you are away from whatever is troubling you and you can just focus in on that particular activity which is good. And hey guys, exercising doesn't have to be complicated. Try to get at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity. You can try to fit in at least 20 or 25 minutes of activity every day, even if it's swimming, brisk walking, or even riding your bike. Now, in fact, one study shows that any form of regular movement, regardless of exercise limitations, reduces feelings of stress, and that is good. Number two, start meditation. Any kind of meditation can help get rid of negative thoughts and allow your mind to just relax. Now, whether this is spiritual meditation, cognitive therapy, or yoga, it all makes a huge difference. Mindfulness techniques are designed to help you reduce stress. So try to start each morning with a 15 minute meditation. Find a quiet space to focus on your breathing, push away all those negative thoughts from your head, and let yourself be present in that moment. I can guarantee that this will set your tone for the rest of the day. Number three, start writing a journal. Keeping a gratitude journal or writing down your thoughts, the positive ones in a diary is a great stress buster. If you write down all that you're grateful for every day or any other positive things that happen to you, you will calm your brain down and you will release some positivity. This will decrease stress and it will help you see your situation from a different perspective. Number four, try out the Clinio app. Clinio changes the way you approach diabetes, your everyday routine, and your food. Now, lots of people who have been using this app agreed that it helps you take small steps towards sustainable results, avoiding anxiety and diabetes burnout. So check the app in the description I put down below this video and keep your diabetes related stress far away. All right, number five, find a hobby. You know how they say, find something you love to do and you'll never work another day in your life? Well, you can adopt that same philosophy to your hobby. Explore new activities that keep you moving and that distract you at the same time. And there are plenty of options for you here, okay? Try hiking in new settings every weekend, traveling to another city, and maybe just spending the whole day walking around. Also, maybe you're up to volunteering in your local community's organization or, hey, simply starting up a backyard garden. Give yourself some time to really find what you like. And at the end of the day, it is all about taking care of yourself and keeping that stress away. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> all right, now go check out these other videos on the Clinio channel and I will see you next time.